What is up you guys, my name is Lily. I'm a fiber artist and knitwear designer and I like to make things. If you see my machine in front of me, then you already know what's going on. We're gonna be using my 48 needle center knitting machine to make, drum roll please, a baby tee. Ah, woo. We are gonna be making a bright pink baby tee. It's gonna go like to here, short sleeve, and it's gonna say, I heart me because I do, and you should heart you too. <laughs> I've been wanting to make this for a while. I have like a whole list of videos, so. That's what we're doing today. Let's just get started. I have my acrylic waist yarn and I'm just gonna pass on with this bad boy and we are gonna do stitches three through 47, right? Yeah, three through 47 for this. So it's gonna be 44 stitches wide. Let's cast on. <gasps> Ew, my yarn got in my coffee cup. I just noticed that, I'm scared, you guys. I actually, I noticed that because I wanted to show you guys look at my coffee cup. It's the note from Jersey Shore. If you know, you know. My bestie got that for me. We love Jersey Short in this house. Okay, finish casting on. I'm just gonna do like 10 to 15 rows of my waist yarn. I've said this once, I'll say it again. The waist yarn just helps to have a cleaner edge. If you don't use waist yarn, then your edge is gonna look busted. Um, that was really aggressive, but it kind of will. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> may or may not have had to redo that off camera because my machine really hates this like stiff acrylic yarn that I'm using. But I just finished casting one. I'm gonna go in with my yarn in bubble gum and we are going to do 121 rows of this color. I'm basing this off of my Met Gala dress that I made in a previous video. The top part of the dress was like sort of a tank top pattern and it was 121 rows. So that was a perfect length I felt like and that's what we're doing. break from my panel to show you this lamp that BenQ Smart Lighting sent me. I am not paid to say this or anything like that. I just wanted to share like my honest review. I've been using it for like my DIY projects and my crochet and stuff. And it's made for like reading and like looking at your computer. And it turns on by touching this thing. It's kind of fun fun. You can like dim it by turning this knob on top. And then if you hold it down, it changes to like a different color, which is like better, I think, for reading. The one thing I will say is it's quite large for my purposes. I think I would really prefer something like half the size because it's sort of like, sort of in the way. But besides that, it's like extremely nice quality and I feel like the lighting is really nice. Like you can see how lit up my product is. I should honestly be using it in this video because this is like before you can't see anything. Oh, that's nice, I love that. Anyways, I'll have this linked in my description in case anyone's interested and thank you, BenQ, for sending it. Boop, 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 bop, bop, beep, bop, boop, beep. Oh god. Oh god. Testing out a new angle here. Don't look at this at all. This is this doesn't exist. It didn't happen. It's my boyfriend's dish day. He hasn't done the dishes yet, but that's none of my business. Just finished my channel. 121 rows, like I said, and I'm gonna go back in with my waist yarn. And we're just gonna use up that whole ball that I had. And now that I'm done with that, I'm just gonna turn twice to pop this bad boy off the machine. And we are done. First channel done, guys. I forgot to mention this because I'm being a bad YouTuber, but this is gonna be the front panel. I'm gonna make a second back panel that's gonna be identical. And then I'm gonna have two just flat short panels for the sleeves. I'm not gonna do any like decreases or increases because you know how you might not know, but sleeves are usually like a little horseshoe shape. I'm not gonna do that. I think it's gonna be fine, but this is the front panel finished. It's looking cute, cute, cute. I just wanna like decide how long the sleeve should be. I'm not gonna do long sleeve, although this looks kind of cute. What's a good sleeve length, you guys? Like, I think like here, right? Okay, let's see. This is how I fucking figure shit out. I just like start counting, so. Let's just say 30. So I'm gonna do two panels that are the same amount of stitches wide, so 44 stitches for 30 rows for the sleeves. Let's get right into it. <laughs> Alright, 
that is the arm panel done and the front panels. I'm gonna do the exact same thing off camera, but I'm actually gonna do it on camera. I'm just gonna do it for my little reel I make of this. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna check it out and I'll be right back. All right, all right, all right. I finished. Boop, boop, boop. All four panels. I already removed the waist yarn on one of them. Right now I'm gonna remove the waist yarn and I'll show you guys, but I don't think I'm gonna do like a tutorial style because I've done this in like so many other videos. But yeah, let's remove that waist yarn. All right, so like I said, it's time to remove the waist yarn and I just kind of want to show you guys what I'm talking about when I say it won't look good if you don't do waist yarn the edges this is what the edge looks like if you just did a panel with no waist yarn so it's like kind of hard to see with this dark yarn but it's very just ragged and uneven and then this is the side where I've removed the waist yarn it's a lot cleaner obviously it does have these gaps and that's because I'd used half double crochets to bind off if you use a slip stitch or a single crochet it will be much less gappy and I'm gonna do that on the other side of this so you'll see but this is what we're doing doing right now and here's how you do it so I've attached my pink yarn same color as my body yarn and I just stick my hook into that first stitch and then I chain one and I'm gonna go in with a half double crochet in that same stitch it's important to use a contrast color so you can see these stitches really well but then I'm gonna go in with this in this second stitch with another half double crochet and that's literally all we're doing so we're just putting half double crochets in all of the final stitches of our bodywork and that is how you remove the waist turn once you get to the end so i have a half double crochet in every single stitch that's 44 stitches you're just gonna fasten off and then you just unravel this and that's it so the edge is secure but yeah right now i'm just finishing up removing the waist yarn on all my panels and then it's assembly time hey guys it's the next day as you can probably tell because i look like shite dude these iphone cameras are way too hd like it's scary it's scary i'm jump scared right now i just finished removing the waist yarn on all of my panels and i just wanted to show you guys the difference between the half double crochet bind off and the single crochet bind off so here's the half double double crochet bind off so you can see it has like more gapping and then this is the single crochet bind off so it's a lot cleaner it's a lot it looks better I think actually <laughs> let's just say that so that's the T and now we're gonna assemble the top and so we're gonna start by assembling at the shoulders first let's do it we got this bad boy pinned right sides together as you can see so this is the wrong side wrong side and the first step is to connect at the shoulders I'm gonna connect with a single crochet both of these panels together and I in 10 single crochets on both sides. Let's get into it. And the shoulders are done. Hopefully my big ass head can fit through that hole. This is what it looks like on the other side. Cuteness, cuteness. It's coming together. Next step is to add the arm panels. And this is my really tricky, fun way of adding this. I did not invent this, but it's my favorite way of adding arm panels. So we already attached the shoulders, as you can see. I have my arm panel here and I have it pinned at the middle point. And with right sides together, I'm just gonna pin the arm panel flat. Like this so then it'll be attached like that and when we fold the top again it'll be like a little sleeve let's go ahead and pin this and I pin the midpoint so that I know exactly where the middle of the sleeve is and I can pin it to the shoulder I want my arm panel to be at least 12 inches because that's about the circumference of my shoulder so I'm gonna grab my measuring tape so sweet and, uh, oh, okay it's already like naturally pretty good so i'm just gonna go ahead and pin that and i am gonna actually count the amount of rows that i'm down just to make it even 29 rows down it's honestly just easier to count like even though it seems annoying like then you don't have to worry about whether something is perfect you know Her. i'm gonna single crochet along this line because single crochet is a stretchier i want the arms to not be tight and this is what it's gonna look like when it's done obviously it'll be seamed together but as you can see it creates like a sleeve Oh my God, it 
looks so cute. So as you saw, finished adding the sleeves, finished the shoulders, and now we're just gonna slip stitch up the side and the arm on both sides. So obviously I have it pinned a bunch. My number one pro tip for assembling center knitting machine panels is to pin a shit ton because if not, the panels will kind of come like unaligned and then you'll have like a bunch of excess on one side and that's not cute. So make sure to pin a lot and let's do this. I'm like loving how this looks, I'm so excited. <laughs> later hopefully I look a little bit better than this morning but as you can see so I finished the whole top I've weaved in my ends I like to get that over with and I'm like I really like it like part of me was like ooh, should I just like not do the duplicate stitching but I honestly think it'll be like way more special if I do do that the only thing is because I didn't like do the bell shaped sleeve like I said it's just a straight panel I do have some like armpit bunching as you can see it gets better if I pull it though whatever it's just a prototype I'm learning um but yeah so now i'm gonna go in with my duplicate stitching and i am i'm having like a little decision let me i'll be right back okay Boop. so as you guys know it's gonna say i hurt me and i am trying to decide if i should do black i heart me with like a red heart you know or if i should do like bright pink i heart me i'm literally deciding right now <sighs> something about i don't i don't know like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I can't decide. <laughs> this would be like more my color palette. I'm feeling crazy indecisive. Me closing my eyes. Me hallucinating what would look like. You know what, fuck it. Sorry, I'm screaming. I'm gonna do paint and red. Another quick update, I decided to pin where the graphic is gonna go. So originally this was like about here and I decided I wanted the graphic to be like bigger. So I'm gonna adjust my pattern to be 15 stitches longer. So it'll be like the same thing, but I'll just have to make all the letters longer, I guess. So I'm gonna quickly do that and then it's time to duplicate stitch. <laughs> We're making progress on the eye, as you can see, and it dawned on me that I should actually show you what I'm doing. It's super, super simple. This is called duplicate stitching. There are other ways to color block in knitting, but obviously I didn't hand knit this, so I'm doing duplicate stitching. And basically I have my yarn, and you always start at the bottom of a V, this V right here. So I insert it at the bottom, and then you go into the stitch above the stitch you're doing, right there. So I'm doing this stitch here. And then you're gonna stick it through both loops and then just pull it. And then you wanna make sure your tension is like not too tight, not too loose, kind of perfect. And then you're gonna stick it back to the bottom of that first V, like so. And then once again, pull. And then I'm just gonna reinsert it into the bottom of the next V up and do the same process again. Boom. So I'll check in with you guys once I'm done with the eye and We'll see what's happening. Little update, I finished the eye. I, 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 I. I think it looks good. Like, I feel like I went through all the stages of grief. I became disillusioned. I was like, it doesn't look good and this is taking forever and like, fuck this, I should just give up. But I actually do think it looks good now. So that's my huge, crazy story. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna now do the heart. So I'm going in order for some reason. And I'm not sure how much of it I'll film just because, I don't know. Sometimes I don't wanna set up the camera, you know what I'm saying? Everyone gets mad at me. And yeah, that's my little update. I'll show you guys how it goes. <laughs> I'm back in my room. I live in pajamas. My boyfriend just texted me asking if I could go get something from the market downstairs. And I'm like, I can't, <laughs> I can't walk. I can't go. I'm physically unable. I low key might ignore the text a little bit. Elliot, if you're watching this later, if you want, what do you want? Turning things around section of my utilized list in the last six easily look up outfits with my mom. 
most worn items and so I can do My skin looks so crazy in this lighting. I cannot explain it. Just finished weaving in all my ends. Sneaky. Oh, that was too much of sneaky. It's time for the reveal. I literally did nothing to build suspense for this, so here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! I always like come into the end being like ta-da and then giggle a little bit, but this is the final t-shirt. Do you guys like it? It says, I hurt me. I don't know if you guys can read, but that's what it says. I think it's cute. I like it. I like it. There's some things I would change for sure. <laughs> Actually, no, let me start about what I like about it first. Love the length, love the color, love what it says. I love me, 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 me. It was super fun. First time doing duplicate stitches. I thought that was really awesome. Just with the knitting machine limitations, like it can only be so big. So the sleeves are a little tight. And also because I didn't do the bell, like I think I mentioned this, there's excess like bunching right here, but it's okay. Like I can still wear it. I still think it's cuteness. I'm actually looking into getting an industrial knitting machine machine and I won't have the size limitations that I obviously do with the 48 pin machine. So I'm really excited about that. Let me know if you guys want me to do that, but they're so expensive. So anyways, this is my top. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video though. Thank you so much for being here. If you like tutorials and DIYs and craft girl things, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Our little Foobie Zoo Nation is growing. We have almost 3,500 subscribers already. I feel like we just hit 3,000. So I'm just super over the moon about that. I'm gunning for 10 thousand i know that's a little getting ahead of myself however i'm the new moon manifester girl so we'll see what happens but thank you so much again for being here and i'll see you in the next one bye the next oh. <laughs> i